for joining us for a Tuesdays for Teachers this afternoon. Uh, I'm Debbie Fawcett. I want to welcome you to a session, Practice Makes Perfect, and could raise a score by four points. Next. Slide. I want to welcome you. Uh, I am Debbie Fawcett with GED Testing Service, and I have the, the uh, pleasure of welcoming a dear friend and colleague, Karen Crow Ruiz, who is a GED instructor from Tulare Adult School to join us today, because it is a special presentation and how we may take a little bit of a different look at what we're doing in these, um, I can't say they're unusual anymore, there are new usual times. So we wanna welcome you. Uh, we're gonna spend the next hour with you. A few housekeeping tours we wanna make sure everybody understands before we get too far into this. Um, I will be talking for the first part and then I'm going to have my colleague Karen take you through some really interesting information. And during that time, if you have any questions or concerns, please type them into the chat box. I'll be the one monitoring the chat box and we'll take some breaks and respond to your questions along the way. But I just wanna make sure you know that the chat box is where you put everything. We have you all muted right now. Toward the end, we will release that, but we found it works a lot better. Um, it's for everyone and their etiquette for hearing if we mute along the way. So let's get started. Let's go to the next slide. So in this session today, we're gonna look at several things. We're going to discuss the instructional landscape. We're also gonna talk a little bit about a partnership and how that partnership has responded to some of the identified needs of students and educators. We're also gonna take a deep dive to model a specific classroom resource. And then we're gonna tie it all together with how that classroom resource connects back to one of our most important resource tools, the GED Enhanced Score Report. Next. I think I like to use this picture quite often. If you've seen me do some of my presentations, you know that I, I talk about either the testing or the instructional landscape. And I think it's gonna be a long time before we see testing like this, even though, or any instruction delivered this way. Because what we see in this picture is not what the majority of adult educators and students are experiencing today in either the classroom or the testing environment. We know uh, that whether it was pre-COVID or post-COVID, in instruction, there are always things that you are looking for as both educators and what we hear from our students. And those issues have been more compounded with the advent of our new normal and so much virtual work in the classroom. Um, what we heard at GED testing service a couple of years ago, very loudly and clearly, was that students didn't feel like they had access to enough GED aligned practice questions. They just needed more practice. And when we heard that, we began to seek solutions. We went to our partners in the field. And I'm very happy to say that our partners at Aztec stepped up and worked with us and together we co-developed GED Flash. And we were very thankful to have our partners because it takes the village, literally. So let's talk about that partnership for solutions. We at GED Testing Service and our colleagues at Aztec Heart, uh, Software worked it together to build GED Flash. Now, most of you know about Flash, but for those of you who need a brief introduction, I'll share just a few basic updates on it. GED Flash is a supplemental practice tool that provides adult education programs and learners access to thousands of randomized practice questions across all four content areas of the GED test. 
we've done research because we wanted to make sure that our students were having the outcomes that both we and Aztec expected them to have by using this product. And I'm very happy to tell you that the resource has shown that with a student's preparation and consistent use of the program, the learners are able to raise their scores by an average of four points. Now that's very reassuring to us to be able to share with our educators and our learners that this practice is something that is helpful and making a difference in how they score when they go to take their GED test. It's very important, uh, especially, it was important before the COVID experience, and it's even more critical now with less and less in-class interaction and so little connection to students beyond a virtual classroom, this really brings to the forefront the importance of having this added supplemental tool to provide greater practice. As we looked at what we could do in this virtual environment, and that's what so much of our professional development is geared toward, we're trying to bring to you things that we believe make a difference in the lives of students, especially now. For that reason, we wanted to take a deeper dive into just how this daily, this resource, uh, resource can be used daily in the classroom. Uh, very often when we do our Tuesdays for Teacher sessions, we talk, we give you the highlights of many different things that are out there for your use but sometimes it's best to take a deep dive and really understand and model how GED Flash can be used to complement your lessons. To do that, we felt it was far better for you to hear from one of your colleagues and somebody who uses this with their students on a daily basis. And for that reason, I've uh, you know, I invited Karen uh, Karen to come with us from Tulare Adult School, and I wanted her just to share how she uses and models a lesson for her students. So with this, I'd like to introduce you to Karen, and I'd like for Karen to take a second and tell you a little bit about herself. Karen? Hi, everybody. So I'm Karen Ruiz, and I'm currently an ABE and GED instructor at an adult school in the Central Valley of California. This is my 23rd year in education and my 14th year teaching adult students. And I'm super excited to be part of your Tuesdays with Teachers webinar and to start off our discussion of the GED Flash program by Aztec Software. So I'm gonna start by reviewing how my students are placed in the GED Flash class, but please keep in mind that Aztec offers many different academic programs and GED Flash is available in different formats and different platforms. So I've included screenshots in this webinar of the version of GED Flash that I currently have available through my instructional site. The features or functions that you have might not be the same. And so I want you to kind of keep that in mind. But if you do see something that you'd like to learn more about in regards to the platform, please reach out to your field service representative or your sales rep. So what I'm gonna do is start with a little background information about my site. So at my school, students are placed in my GED class based on their state approved NRS entry exam. We use CASAS on our site. And so what my students need to do is they need to score a 239 on the C or D level reading CASAS goals test, which then shows that they're functioning at a high school grade level in reading. One of the first things that my students do when they enter our GED classes is they take a GED ready practice test on the GED.com website. And I usually suggest that my students take a GED social studies or math test. The social studies is primarily reading comprehension Whereas the language arts has reading comprehension, some grammar and syntax, and an essay, which I, I'm not even sure if they grade that on the GED ready or not. Some of my students, and, and in my class we call them unicorns, they like to start with math. 
And some of my students also like to start with science. And so what I usually suggest is that they actually take that science test first before, or I'm sorry, they take the math test first before the science test, just because there's a little bit of algebra in the science and it really helps me help them if we know exactly where that student's math skills are before we try to tackle that science content. And then after they take their GED tests, we review their score and their score reports. And just as kind of a side note here, usually of course this would take place in my classroom, but since my students are working from home, I have them email a PDF of their scores to me. And this was kind of a step that we struggled with last spring when we started working from home. So I created a video of, uh, of the different steps that needed to be taken to run those reports and I put it on our class website. And so what that video does is explains how to run that score report for the Kaplan GED book for Aztec and for the Paxton GED books, because these are all resources that are available to me and to my students on our campus. The students then need to save those documents as PDFs on their computer, and then they attach those PDFs to emails to me. And what we discussed is how great this skill is for them to know for the future in case they need to save and attach documents to emails. And we also talk about how the report describes what skills the students need to work on and how that information helps me develop an individualized learning plan for them that only includes the skills that are pertinent to their passing their tests. And I explain that this is the reason that I need the whole report and not just their score. So when I get a student's score reports, I first look at the score bar at the top of the report. If I have a student whose score is in the not likely to pass range, they start working on Aztec, or if they don't have access to a computer or other technology, they start working in one of our GED books. And then when they get into Aztec, I have them take the locator test to determine which class to put them in. Students who are in that too close to call range also start working on Aztec or our GED textbooks. And even though their scores may be really close to that passing score of 145, the Aztec Learning System software's pre-learning assessments will then identify skills in which the students already show competency and allow the student to bypass those lessons and or even those drills. In my class, the students can bypass any of their waived Aztec lessons, but they still have to complete all the drills with a minimum score of 80%. And then in my class, GED Flash is for those students whose GED Ready practice test score is in that likely to pass range or that green range. So I suggest that my students who score at least a 150 or higher before scheduling to take an actual GED test. Some of the students schedule the test soon after, they, uh, after taking the practice test while others decide to do a little bit more studying before testing. Either way, I enroll these students into GED Flash until they take their official GED test. For my students whose scores are between 145 and 150, we usually have a conversation about what they want to do next. So some of my students want to just work in GED Flash and others want to review the lessons outlined in that GED Ready score report and go back and do those lessons in the Aztec Learning Software Suite. I do have some students who want to take the GED test as soon as their ready practice test score hits that 145, but after prepping for this webinar and getting a sneak peek at the data that Debbie's gonna present to you a little later, I have a new bit of evidence that I get to share with them that supports their taking a little more time to work on the GED flash to bump their score up to 150 or higher. So Debbie's going to go into this a little bit more in detail, but I'll be sharing with my students that there has been research done to show that students who complete at least 10 rounds of GED flash sets are more likely to increase their GED ready practice test score and subsequently their GED test score by four points. 
So before we go in and start reviewing the student view of GED Flash, just want to know if there are any questions about on the previous slides and if there's anything that I can answer right now. Debbie, do we have anything? We, we have some questions, Karen, but they're not directly related to what you have on the slides, but I'll use this opportunity. There are some questions about whether GED Flash is in Spanish. And at the current time, this product is not in Spanish, but there are many products available from Aztec that are in Spanish. So if that is a concern, we're going to have information about how you could see additional information on other products from Aztec at this time. Um, so not in Spanish for this, but also keep in mind that GED Flash is a supplemental material that can be used with any other type of preparation materials. Karen has listed the type that she uses, but because it is supplemental, whatever you're using in the classroom, uh, GED Flash can complement what you are doing with your prep materials. And I think that's it for now. So okay. keep going, Karen. <laughs> Super. Okay, so let's move forward. So when my students get started in GED Flash, I explain the following to them. So there are 10 questions in each Flash set, and they can move forward and backward through the questions if they want to. There's a timer, but there's no time limit. And so for some of my students who are scoring a little low on their flash sets, we review the time they've spent on each set and try to determine if maybe they need to spend more time on each question. I've had students who've gone through and finished a flash set of 10 questions in three minutes and then can't figure out why their score is so low. So that's a conversation to be had. For some of my other students who are scoring 80% on hot or higher on their flash sets, we also review the time to see if maybe they could shave off a little time as they continue to work through those sets. Again, there's 10 questions and particularly with the, the pieces that have large quantities of reading, sometimes students will take anywhere between five or more, maybe even 10 minutes per per um, question, which leads to, you know, a, a flash set that takes an hour to complete. So we want to shave that time down a little bit. For my students who scored between 145 and 150 on their GED Ready practice test, I explained that we want their score in their flash sets to be consistently at an 80% or higher before they take another GED Ready practice test. So I describe consistently as being, you know, two or three times in a row. They do need to click on Submit Flash in order for their scores to be included in the score report on the Flash menu, and we'll talk about that in, a, in just a bit. And I explained to my students that if they accidentally click Exit, they'll be able to return to the Flash menu, but then their scores won't be tabulated. So just a few more things here. I let my students know that the questions are usually in a white box and for subjects other than math, there's often sections of text that are included for each flash question and they're usually in a yellow box and often the student will need to drag the contents up or down in the box to in, uh, view the entire piece. I also let my students know that for any multiple choice responses like this one here, Whatever answer they click on the first time is their submitted answer. So I did have a student who got a little frustrated with this because she liked to click on each letter as she read them. And so we kind of had to retrain her to click in front of the letter for each one as she read them. So she wasn't marking A for all of her responses. The last and most important part for the student, aside from the question, is the pop-up answer. So this slide shows an answer that's correct, but there's always an explanation of why the answer is correct. So I instruct my students to read all of the explanations, whether or not they answer the question correctly or incorrectly. And I explain that I can often answer a question correctly, but maybe for all of the wrong reasons or maybe that there's some new information in the explanation that I should jot down in my notes. 
And then a final piece of information for the teacher. If there are any questions about the flash question, each one is numbered. And I love that. I can send the number and my question to my field service rep, and he can either answer my question or forward it on to tech or curriculum support. And I will note also that there are so many of these questions. I did have a student last year who worked on GED Flash with math after finishing all of the Aztec math lessons just to get herself really comfortable with the types of questions she would see on the GED test. And she probably worked anywhere between three to six hours a day on GED math questions for about six weeks. And she said sometimes the setup for the question was the same, but she never had the same question twice. So sometimes the text was the same or the support information or you know the geometry form was the same, but it was never the exact same question. So a couple more things to note, there is a calculator available that is the same as the TI-30XS that students can use during a GED test. And so that is up there in the corner, you can click on that. And then students can also click on the picture icon to open the formula sheet. And you can see that there's a hint in this question box, the white question box, that actually tells the student to open up the formula sheet. And for my students, this was really important for us to have them practice this if they were going to be taking the math GED test online versus at our testing center because they're not allowed to use a handheld cal cal uh, calculator during the online test. And they're not allowed to have any papers or pencils or anything like that in front of them while they're taking the online test. So it really helped them to get used to that calculator and used to referring to these little dots up here, these little icons, rather than the papers on their desk, which has to be clean. So when the student uh, submits their answer, there's confetti and a loud celebration, depending on how high your speakers are um, set up. So you might want to give your students a heads up. I think, I'm not sure if my speakers are up on this. I'm not sure if you'll hear it. But I can tell you that um, I, as a modestly experienced teacher, shrieked so loudly in my empty classroom when it went off the first time that it caused my colleague to come and check on me. So you might want to give your students a heads up on that. And then after they finish, they'll want to click Submit Flash. And when they do, they'll be taken back to the GED Flash classroom homepage. And so, whoops, let me back up one. There we go. In the classroom page, the what I know and progress icons will appear after a student completes and submits one flash set. So students can click on them for more information about their progress. So what we're gonna look at first is this what I know part. But before we move through, I want you to also notice that there are four different groups of flash sets for math. So the sets are based on the content in the GED, and you can see the percentage of the test each group covers. So the other subject area flash sets are organized and detailed in the similar manner. So if you were to click on that I icon in the what I know column, then this will open up the knowledge report, and it's broken up into two different sections. There's the you know how to section, and then there's the you should try to improve how you section. So this is a really great report for students to review regularly and also for instructors to review with them, particularly if students had scored in that 145 to 150 range. So what I have my students in the 145 to 150 range do is complete five rounds of flash in the same set and then we'll review the you should try to improve areas and discuss them. Does that student need some additional lessons or practice in these areas or maybe just a little review from me? So you can see here that this student, who's actually me, because this is my information on when I took a GED flash set, this student needs to work with undefined numerical expressions 
and multi-step real-world measurement problems that use ratios, proportions, and percentages. Remediation can occur after just one completed set of flash, but the student will only have seen one card in each of the skill areas shown here. This report just covers the skills covered in each flash set. So if you see, there were 10 questions in the flash set, and this report identifies 10 skills. So note that my knowledge report includes my completion of just one flash set. That means that each of these skills that are listed here has only been assessed one time. So completion of multiple flash sets is really needed to get a clear picture as to what skills the student does or does not need remediated. So let's look at the progress icon. And when that's clicked, this window here will show up. And it shows when the student had taken the test and what the score was. So the blanks show attempts that have not been completed or submitted. So you can see that that gray most recent I clicked in, I clicked out, I didn't finish. The student can also click on the scores tab. And when that occurs, the student can see a list of the sets they've completed and their scores. So I have my students monitor their scores here. And they some of them also like to use Aztec's GED flash checklists. And the checklists are available for each of the four subject area flash courses. And you can see that there are columns for each of the flash sets. My students can input their scores in the checklist. For those who are in that 145 to 150 score group, they're supposed to notify me after they finish five rounds of one set. So then we'll review their scores and decide if they need to continue with these sets or move to another set, or if they need to stop working in Flash and maybe look at reviewing some concepts or skills in the Aztec learning software classes or with some additional worksheets or review. So we've covered a whole lot, and I just want to go through an abridged version of the next few slides. But before we do, are there any questions about what we just covered? Debbie? Absolutely. There are plenty of questions about some of the information we've just covered. So we can answer now, and some I think we'll cover toward the end. Okay. Um, sim simple things. There was a question to you um, about how did you decide uh, which practice test a student may want to take first? Somebody was just saying, you know, they usually ask their students to take um, whatever they, that they choose, you know, what do they feel comfortable with? You might talk just a little bit about how you look at your students and decide, let's see where we're going to start in our practice test. Sure. So I talk to the students and ask them, you know, what they what they're interested in starting first. Um, most of the time they want to do something like reading um, and they usually say reading first. I, I do have I've had now two unicorns who have come through and say, I love math, I love math the most, and I want to start with math. So uh, we usually kick that and go start with math first. Um, with those, and both of those two students, I'll have you know, they said, I love math, I'll start with math. They said, okie dokie, and uh, gave the ready test. They scored like way in the green, 150, 155. And I know my one gal last year, she scored like 155 or so in it and took the test the following week and scored a 168 on the test. So she's my, my true unicorn. Um, in regards to reading, you know, if they say, well, we kind of want to do reading first, I do have them take the social studies test instead of the reading test. Because what I found is with the social studies, uh, it's primarily reading comprehension. You know, GED is never going to ask you when the War of 1812 took place. They're going to ask you to read a, a couple of different uh, sample pieces and then ask some questions about those pieces after uh, the student it synthesizes the information. There is a little bit of vocabulary in there that the student would need to know. I do know I have one student that we put in the social studies test first and she said she got a little confused about things like when it asked about, you know, what was a settler and there was a question about a pilgrim and there was a question about um, settlements and territories. 
And so there certainly is some of that vocabulary in there, but I really find that that gives me a better understanding of their reading comprehension skills as opposed to the language arts. And the students do get frustrated with the essay. Uh, Debbie, you can kind of speak a little bit to the GED Ready essay. Can you tell me, is on the GED Ready practice test, is that essay graded? No, let, I, and I'm glad you gave me that opportunity. I wanted to clear that up. Um, the Reading Through Language Arts uh, extended response on the GED Ready, that was always intended, uh, number one, as something you can print out and see, and it was used, it was uh, created to be an instructional tool for teachers. It is not graded uh, by our, uh, in our artificial intelligence, our AIS. It is not graded. It was intended for instructors to grade and it gives them the opportunity to see how the students write and to provide feedback and learn how to move along. So the reasoning through language arts on the practice test is something we always intended to be scored by instructors. That's why we have an electronic scoring tool and instrument for that purpose. And that's a whole other discussion and webinars we have on Tuesdays for teachers. But thank you for giving me a chance to make that real clear with everybody, okay? Thank you, you made it clear for me as well. So my students, a lot of times, especially at the beginning of the school year or at the beginning of a new term when I have, you know, eight, nine, 12, 15 students coming in all at once, to, to have them want to know their score as soon as they're done with the test and to have us look through an essay, it's, it's a little bit complicated. So I really have found that the social studies does seem to let me know what their reading comprehension skills are. And so we do placement or we do placement according to that. In regards to the science versus the math, I did have a couple students last year who kind of taught me that if we start with science and the score is low, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to kind of figure out, is their science score low because of their reading comprehension or is their science skill score low because they don't understand the science content or is the science content low because they're struggling with the math, which is one of the ticks or one of the skills identified in the GED Ready uh, report. So for me, it just really helps for me to be able to see if that math score, how, how competent they are with math and reading um, in order to make some clear um, prescriptions and definitions of, of work to be done in the other two areas. Okay. Debbie, do we have other questions? There are several other things that are coming up and I just uh, let me address them now and we'll move forward. And I'm gonna piggyback later on something you had mentioned about um, how do we get them, how do we know which place to start with the test? Um, we're getting a lot of questions and some of you are very interested in, in, in some things and I'm answering in the questions as best I can. But issues about the cost, we're going to give you a slide at the end. That's not what this webinar was about, but we certainly will provide you the information to access our colleagues at Aztec to find out more um, about any cost. There were some questions to understand that Flash is different from the Aztec GED, you know, process the, the Kaplan information. One is a very robust system, a complete, a comprehensive system to prepare students for the test, the practice test with lessons, and with all of the follow-up that they need. And FLASH is supplemental that will complement whatever preparation you are using in your classrooms. So I, I those keep coming up, so I wanted to make sure. There are, they are two distinct things. Um, the Aztec software program, the Aztec GED Kaplan program is separate and apart from Flash and uh, two different products. And um, we had a question, some of you, there's always a way to use Flash in the prisons. That was one that I think is important to come up. And um, I think that's all I see right now that I haven't addressed either in the question box or, or, or elsewhere. So, Karen? 
Thanks. I, I'm going to go back to that one question you had about the difference between GED Flash and Aztec. I look at Aztec as being the lessons. So the, they're the meaty part. There are actual lessons for the students. There's practice in there. And then there's kind of mini quizzes or drills. And then um, summative as assessments at the end of each unit. So those are your, your kind of meaty instructional pieces. GED Flash is looking at, you know, reviewing the content that the student has already seen or already has, pre has practiced and has an understanding of. So I do, I have heard of some teachers saying, well, I put my students in GED Flash and it was so hard and we didn't like it because they just, they got frustrated with the questions and there wasn't any rhyme or reason to them. And I think that's probably because the student was placed in it too quickly. And so if you think about it, it's really like that, you know, we, we don't ever want our students in, in the traditional classrooms. And we, when we were students as traditional classrooms, probably didn't really do very great if we tried to cram for a test the night before and hadn't done a lot of the work through the entire semester. And so if you really look at it that way, GD Flash would be great to help you review for that test if you already have an understanding of most of the content and you just needed practice um, answering questions within the realm of that content. And hopefully that kind of gives you a, a little bit of a peek as a difference between the two. It's actually called Flash because they're kind of like advanced flashcards. And flashcards aren't really great to teach anybody anything if they don't have any understanding of the content that's being presented. Did that kind of cover that a little bit, Debbie? That did. And I want to quickly cover a couple of things. Anytime we're talking about things that are specific to our test, I want to make sure that our, our participants don't have any misunderstanding. Um, one of the questions that says, since the GED ready doesn't auto, uh, doesn't grade the RLA essay, does that mean that a GED ready score is only scoring their reading skills? That is not a correct assumption. Let me explain about how the, the read, reasoning through language arts GED ready test is scored. It does not score, we don't score the writing but the algorithm is such in the GED ready for the RLA test that it does score the other enhanced IT, the items, the, the drop downs, the multiple choice, whatever. And based on how those responses are made, it extrapolates, the algorithm can extrapolate what the student's score would be with the addition of the reading. And we have that so well measured and researched that it has the same reliability. We know how reliable that score is. It matches, uh, you know, the reliability is like it is with all other tests. So although we're not scoring the written comment, uh, the written extended response, what we are doing is through the algorithm, taking note of how, based on how they answered the questions, we would expect this sort of answer to be seen in the writing. Therefore, it gives them a comprehensive score. So I wanted to make sure you understood that. And you made a very strong point, Karen, when you talk about problems with the students, you don't know exactly, are they having trouble in science because of the reading, because of the math, or other issues. And, and we can tell you, our experience is first and foremost, reading skills are your number one issue. Then you may come into the other computational issues. So those are just some things I wanted to add in since they had been discussed. All right? Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to do just kind of an abridged version of what we had gone through before, because I know that that was a lot of material about what GED Flash is. So let's review what we've gone through so far in regards to my students working on GED Flash. So my students are placed in the GED class based on their scores on a CASAS reading goals test. They need to score in the ninth grade reading level or a 239 to be in my GED class. 
after they're placed in my GED class, they need to take an official GED ready practice test, and it's usually social studies or math. Students who score 145 or lower are placed into either the Laz Aztec learning software classes or given textbook materials to work with. If their score is 150 or higher, we place them in the GED flash to practice until they can take the GED test. These are students who are allowed to complete as many or as few of the GED sets before they schedule to test. They've already earned a practice test score that's five points or more higher than the required passing test score of 145. If their score is between 145 and 150, the student either works on GED Flash or Aztec lessons, usually depending on what the student feels most comfortable with, most of them choose to work in GED Flash. If students decide to start with the GED Flash sets, they would complete five rounds in one subset, and then I, as the teacher, review their knowledge report with them to determine what skills need some additional work. I need to determine if the student should review the concepts with me, move to Aztec for remediation, or just complete more sets to see if the student can improve their scores. And then this is the part that we haven't discussed yet, but after five subsets are completed, the student and I would review the knowledge report again and look at their total score for the 10 completed sets. And in our class, the rule is 80%. They need to have a score of 80% after five or 10 subsets before they can move on to a new subset. So what's this 80% rule? So students must earn a score of 80% or higher on their drills, flash subsets, or post-tests before moving forward to the next activity. The 80% rule is to ensure students' proficiency on core competencies, or as a student once explained it back to me, she said, so I should probably score like at least an 80% since like a B grade is better than a C grade, right? And I said, yeah, that's exactly it. And go tell those other students that same thing. So as I stated before, I review the student's knowledge report with them after they've completed five rounds of a flash subset. And then after those rounds, the student is allowed to move to a new subset if their core score is 80% or higher. Or the student can do another five rounds if their score is between, you know, 60 and 80%. Because remember, each set is only 10 questions. So 60 to 80% were pretty close. If their score is 60% or lower, then we'll look at their knowledge report together to determine what skills that student needs to work on. So if you look at my scores, because remember this report is from me, you can see that there are three different areas that I need to focus on. This first area is determining if a numerical expression is undefined. And this is a pretty straightforward skill. A numerical expression is undefined if there's no answer or if in fraction form, the denominator is set to zero. So this skill doesn't require a whole lot of practice to master. Most often the question is depicted with a given set of values for X that are used to solve a given expression so that the denominator then becomes zero. And usually a student who has a preliminary understanding of substitution can solve this problem once the concept is explained. But the next two skills on this report cover a broader skill set since the student needs to be able to solve multi-step real world measurement problems that use ratios, proportions, and multiple step real world percentage problems that include things like interest, taxes, tips, and commissions, as well as the increase and decrease of prices and percentages. So these two steps here, or these two skills here, they cover an array of skills and formulas and procedures. So if a student struggled with broad multi-skill areas like this, I would have the student then go back and complete the corresponding lessons and drills from the Aztec learning software suite 
to review these concepts before returning back to GED Flash to complete five more subsets. Reviewing these reports and determining each student's learning needs is crucial in ensuring that students are getting the biggest bang for their buck in regards to the time they put into their studying. So as a teacher and a goal facilitator, I want to make sure that the time and energy that my students put into their studying is truly assisting them when meeting their individual needs and not just a one size fits all blanket course outline. I don't wanna just stick my students on Aztec and have them do it for two weeks and then say, go take a test again. We have the ability to be more prescriptive in our lessons and activities that we have our students do. And so in doing so, you have to read these reports and review the reports. And then on a final note, it is really important to also review the content of the GED Ready score reports themselves. In most instances, students, will, student scores will identify needed remediation covered in all of the flash sets for a given subject area test. However, if you do have a student whose GED Ready score report identifies skills not covered in one or a few of the flash subsets, it would be the instructor's choice to either assign all of the flash sets, sets or just those where the skill remediation is necessary. So if you look at this score report, this student only needs remediation in working with inequalities and graphing their solutions, working with different graphs and plots, and working with You're number changing sets the way you do business. Find the mean, the median, and the right mode, now, and the range. So, are we. so this covers just rethink. Renew, this one section reopen, here switch in graphs to Cox and functions today. and basic algebra. It's no so Oscar, the Donald Trump instructor was just may choose to have this Peace student Prize complete all twice. of the sets or in just news, the Donald ones Trump that were identified the in that GED Ready twice. Practice test. Score Why? Report. Well, he's a big orange meanie who eats puppy oh, brains smothered in ketchup. And unlike mm -hmm. previous winners, he's so actually based done on stuff. these three Let's areas review. of identified remediation, instructors might want to just that assign if he's some racist, practice in he's these really three areas and, as, and then as skip white the GED burn flash minority entirely, to the ground, or they might Trump actually go in and have the student just Israel work on GED and the United flash. Arab Emirates together. I've really come to rely on GED flash to not only prepare my students with the skills that they need to pass the GED test, but also with practice for them to experience those GED the questions. Then there's North Korea. These skills are not yeah, covered in the basic nuts. math but what would you and mostly have? geometry a flash who sets. You're out to get them, or For a this who student, though, I might assign really only the graphs and functions did. and he basic the algebra sets. That had all of so us on, edge. on that final note, by using GED and Flash, my students have practiced dragging and dropping questions into given columns and or rows. And in fact, this is a skill that my students who are working on tablets have struggled with repeatedly. One new way I found GED Flash helpful is for my students who are taking their GED tests online. And we talked about this a little bit before. So I've used GED Flash to help them get used to using the embedded calculator. And we figured out how to simulate the embedded whiteboard so they can practice writing out their scratch paper work with either a computer mouse or I just brought a drawing tablet from home and we're gonna try that because it's a digital drawing tablet slash mouse with a stylus. So for me and my students, GED Flash has become a valuable tool that allows them opportunities to not only assess readiness to take GED tests, but also to practice these tech skills that are needed to successfully complete a test. So before I turn over to Debbie entirely, Debbie, do we have any more questions for me? Um, uh, no, I, I do not believe we have any more questions for you. Uh, they, they think they do, but I'm going to tell them questions about sharing the PowerPoint. I did respond. We post all of our Tuesdays for Teachers webinars on the GED.com website, okay? And this PowerPoint, a uh, recording of the session and the PowerPoint um, is in, and the PowerPoint is already linked in the handout area right now. If you pull, have the pullout box to the right of your screen and see handouts, you can download a copy of the PowerPoint now. 
So you'll be able to access all this information. And um, there are some other questions that, uh, let's see, one that I wanted to, a question about the NRS levels. I will say, if you look at the crosswalk for the use of flash, they look at NRS levels five or six, and uh, you can get that information directly from some of your representatives. And again, in a couple of more slides, we're gonna give you time to take a look at that and get the um, emails that you need to ask more direct questions. The purpose of today's program was to help you understand how it can be used. And I am so happy it's prompted a lot of questions because I do believe it's a valuable resource. Um, and so Karen, I think that's where we can stop right now. If you'd like to turn it over to me and just hand, yeah. hand the slides. Don't sure. turn it over to me, you just move the slides for me. Okay. Well, yeah. So as Karen has moved you through how she works in the classroom with her students, the next step in the process is when they take uh, the GED ready, the most critical thing for you as an educator is to get access to the GED ready score report for student success. I wanted to talk about this so we could kind of tie it all together. You've seen that GED flash can supplement the work you already do in your regular classroom lessons, but then how do you tie that together? You've taught it, they've taken the ready, and now you're gonna use the score report to continue to strengthen their skills if they did not score and a score high enough that you think they're ready to step into the test. And this is an opportunity for me to share with you our ongoing efforts to continuously update and improve the features of the score report. Next. One of the most important things when a student opens up their score report, um, it's going to say, great, you know, Karen showed you what the basic score report looked like. They see, they see their score. Let's say it was too close to call and, and it's going to give them an outline. One of the modifications we made, we used to ask the students to select your prep materials used in your classroom. Well, you and I both know they could not tell you the name of a product they're using, but they know what the cover of the book looks like. So our, our designers and our assessment team has been doing a lot of research with both students and with educators to get their thoughts and ideas, okay? What else would you like to see in the score report? How can we enhance this? So we have fixed it rather than having a laundry list typed out of all the different sessions, we now have pop-ups that show students what the materials look like that they are using, okay? I used because we're working with our partners today, you see the pop-up of the Aztec. So that's what the student is going to see. Another, uh, next slide, Karen. Another improvement, we listened to your comments and the students' comments about um, how we portray to them the skills that they need to be working on. So we have a new format for the skills list. We, we understood that people thought they weren't direct enough about what exactly do I need to be working on to improve my scores. So a couple of things. Number one, we moved to the very top line. Um, we're gonna tell them right away, here's the issue and here are the pages in either the print book or the, the uh, programs, the uh, modules you go to on um, software to use. And we have written the skills improvement checklist rather than so general about the concepts of what they need to work on to be a little bit more specific about this is what you need to be able to do, as in the first one. Recognize a function in a table or graph by determining or not there, there is only one output value for each input value. So we tried to be more direct. We tried to give them the information they're looking for, like what pages do I have to go work on so that I better understand this. So this was another thing that's, that is coming 
in the score report that should make it a little easier for you and your student to navigate. And next. Teachers, we heard you loud and clear. If you're gonna be looking at that score report, you'd like to have a little area where you can write some notes. It's one thing for the student to see the skills to improve checklist. It's even better when you have notes that you can write out in the margins and you can make that a little easier for them to understand. Not only do they have the printout from the score report, but they have your notes and maybe some guided direction and how you want to use that information. So those are some important things that they were using uh, in uh, changes in the score report. And I wanted to make sure I shared that with you because I think it's a really good way to kind of wrap up and tie together what you do in the classroom. You have your instruction, you have your supplemental skills checked off in GED Flash, then you come back to it again. You can go back through your instruction in the enhanced score report. Okay, next. Everything I just showed you, I always have two slides in each of our presentations. If you want to keep up with what is the latest and greatest news or what are we doing at GED Testing Service, sign up for our in-session educator newsletter. Many of you received your invitation to this because you're already on our in-session newsletter. We only send you something once a month. It's the best way to know what's happening at GED. And we wanna make sure everybody gets signed in. That's why we put it at the bottom or footer of every administrator and educator page at GED.com. Next. And please make sure you spend some time at our website, ladies and gentlemen. Everything we've talked about, uh, most of this information um, on GED can be found here. Our products, our services, uh, our free resources that are also available to you. Educators and administrators, that's all you need to click on. Everybody should know that if you're bothering to click into log in or sign up, you're then going, um, you're then going uh, into the student portal, okay? So that's really important for you to know, and we hope you all spend some time visiting what we were telling you, professional development. We have webinars for you, and this particular webinar will be posted. The handout, the PowerPoint is already available for you to download right now. And our, our, uh, we will have this on the webinar site within 48 hours. For those of you who are wondering how do you get points for professional development, we always post a certificate that you can download. That is between you and your agency. You can print it out, you can complete it. We, we put it for the day and the time and the session, and then you submit it, and that's between you and your personnel. Next. Karen, it doesn't seem to want to roll over to the Q&A. Why don't you move on to the next slide? Because I wanna make sure everyone has time to get this information that we've posted in the next slide. I think we've answered most of the questions and answers anyway. I want you to see the slides. If you have questions, many of you asked questions that were very specific that weren't the particular information Karen and I were sharing. But if you need help with anything, you can email support at aztecsoftware.com. And Karen, if you want to scroll down or open it up to the um, grid and share where they can call for additional information about any costs related to Aztec. Yep, any one of those. Want to give oh, you a chance? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have the grid one. Was that one of the hidden no, slides? No, 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 this is fine. This is okay. fine. I'm glad you can get to them here. Get to them here. Let's give everybody a chance. And I don't know if you saw any additional questions, but 
I, I want to thank Karen for sharing this hour with me and uh, an opportunity I can tell from the interest that there are many questions to be asked. You can get them answered either. We will direct them where they need to go if it's something we feel is an Aztec question. And Karen, if you want to go on back to the Aztec on the purchase of Flash, I know there was an email there. Happy to, to show that because I'm sure that email will also get your questions answered about product issues. Okay. And Karen, I want to thank you. I want to give you a chance to close out and then I will say our goodbyes and we will let people get on to the rest of their afternoons. Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie, for everything. And thank you to all of our participants. It's been really a pleasure to be able to speak on behalf of Aztec and to co to, to work collaboratively with GED.com. So I appreciate the opportunity. And for all of you sticking around here on a Tuesday, I thank you so much for, for coming in and for all of your questions. Thanks so much, Karen. Um, again, we'll be doing a Tuesdays for Teachers 